Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's time to do the second pennant in my boho bunting, which is my slow stitching project for 2022, or at least the beginning of 2022. So here's the one I made last time. Um, that's better. I was really pleased with how the how, how it came out. I've been using these scrap bags from Bazaar. I will put a link to them below as always because I just think they're brilliant. And um, yeah, and I've had another rummage through to see what I'm going to use for this week. I thought I'd have to bring the changes a bit, um, do a different shape and some different colours. So let's have a look. I'll show you what I've picked out. Got my cup of coffee ready. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I've got, I've added a couple different embroidery stranded cotton colours into the, into the mix. I'm going to use this piece, which came in one of the scrap bags. I might cut it down just slightly, it might be a little bit too big, I haven't decided. I shall be embellishing it further before I apply it. I've got this this lovely piece which I did pull out last week but I was just over ambitious I pulled out far too many <laughs> um, I'm going to use this probably for the backing and then this piece so I'll probably divide it into I divided it in two horizontally last time I might do it vertically this time to ring the changes and then um, I'm going to use another one of these little shell things in the middle and do a bit of further embroidery into this and then I thought to do the edging this time so last time I used these pom-poms that, that uh, again came into scrap bags there were also quite a lot of these beads now if you have a look at this fabric the little shapes here are all square um, and the little brass beads, the smaller ones there. I'll have to take it out of here. But yeah, so you can see the smaller ones there are actually kind of cube shaped. So that would sort of echo the, the pattern in the fabric. So I thought I might do a bit of beading around the edge for this one. Um, briefly told you putting a strip of this making it three stripes and putting a strip of this sari ribbon up the middle which I, I still might because that would pick up the yellow more as well I could use some of that lovely kind of uh, yellow ochre colour there right so that is my, my plan of what I'm going to use this time I love those colours, I love all those colours together should we have a look at the sari ribbon, should we just have a look I haven't opened it yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, it's lovely. Isn't it lovely? It looks like it might just be all one length, kind of knotted together. It's this yellow that I'm thinking I might use. So I might just cut off the length of that. That's beautiful. Yeah, if I, I'll cut off um, that whole piece there, and then if I don't use it for this, it can be one of the streamers that I'm going to tie between my pennants when I finally hang the the bunting. I like the idea of leaving some just torn strips of fabrics just tied tied in between them to brighten things up. So. Um, that's my selection of bits and bobs for this week. So next step is to, now I'm going to be very careful, I've got, um, listen to some feedback, I've got this grey mat now which will be a softer surface than the glass mat I was using and hopefully won't make so much noise but I'm going to try and be careful not to put things down too hard. I've also put my microphone in a different place which reminds me, I need to make sure that's working a minute before I carry on. 
Yep, I've just had a quick listen and that seems to be recording fine. So hopefully that's going to cut down the sort of clanking on the desk that I was getting. But, you know, if, if, if there are any sound issues, I won't be offended. Please just let me know and I'll do my best to put them right. Go into my little um, slow stitching kit. So I've got um, some of these lovely vintage threads in here. They're all on these old wooden bobbins that you don't get anymore. So I'm going to use the threads and then I'm my plan is that I will um, get them mounted onto kind of wooden plaques to make hanging little hanging units which I think would look lovely I saw it on um, YouTube or somewhere okay so this is what I'm after my little my little boho bunting recipe book <laughs> more more vintage threads in there they're lovely I, I love the labels and and everything some of the threads are sort of breaking a little bit but they're still usable for a little project like this it's, it's an ideal way to use them up I made this up just so that you know if I had a bit of a creative block one week this would get me going so I'm um, basically using these these five shapes for them for the pennant and then I'm using five different applique shapes and then there are five basic steps to get me going so first thing is to choose my pennant shape and this week I'm going to use this kind of horseshoe shape for want of a better word now my applique shape this week is a circle I did cut all the applique shapes because it's quite handy when you're working out the composition and stuff as well um, but I'm not going to cut that from fabric this time. I'm going to use this ready-made piece instead. So I can put all of those out of the way for a minute. And then the idea is that I cut the pennant shape into one, two, three, or four. Well, obviously one, I would just leave, leave it whole. Two can be divided in different ways. I meant to go through and do all the different shapes here, which I will do. I just forgot. Um, I'm just wondering whether to do three this time, three vertical lines. What I might do is start with two, use these two fabrics and um, and then try this ribbon just torn down the centre with this over the top as the applique. Um, and if I don't like that, I'll keep this for later and I will just have two. Okay, so first thing is to get my backing fabric. I might as well leave that stitched piece at the top. I've got a heat erasable fabric marker here. This is a friction one. It's not going to matter too much because you're not really going to see it anyway in the end. Um, but they are good these. The they're heat, you, you use this end to erase them. Um, but essentially it's the heat that's caused by the friction which is why they call friction pens, that makes the, the ink disappear. So you can also blast it with a hairdryer or hang it over a radiator and that does the same thing. Sometimes it's hard to do it with friction on fabric anyway. This is coming out a little bit jumpy this line, but it won't matter. It's only a guide. And I think this fabric is actually two layers. So of course they're going to come apart as soon as I cut this. There we go, and then I will divide it in half up the centre. So I might as well just do that a minute. There we go. Oh, forgot to leave a seam allowance. Oh, well, this one's going to be a little bit smaller then. <laughs> Never mind. It's not going to matter. The whole thing is pretty uh, ramshackle and eclectic anyway, so just make it a small seam allowance. Yeah, so we've got two layers there. Um, next step is to cut a piece of this green to fit one half of my pennant shape. Oh, 
all my little snippings are going in my oats jar. I found a bigger jar for it now. I was talking about oats last time. Google it if you don't know what that is. <laughs> I love how the colours in um, the colours in this fabric I've tried to pick up. Maybe need to get some purple as well. Yeah, I might have to dig out some purple in a minute. Yeah, so I've tried to, to pick up the colours in both fabrics in my threads. The only thing I haven't got there is some purple. Might have to do that. Last week I quite enjoyed, and I might do the same thing again this time, with these pattern fabrics, what I enjoy doing is just doing little stitches into the pattern that's printed on the fabric. So it's almost like um, stitching by numbers. <laughs> it's like having a printed embroidery um, design there. You just... You, know, you don't go over every single bit just you know just here and there where I fancy so uh, yeah there's, there's bits of oh I've got, it on, I've got it the wrong way around you can see it better that way there's bits of gold in there as well I could use some gold thread and just uh, pick up bits here and there so I might be doing that so I want to be able to see this line when I'm stitching so I'm going to put that face down and then I'm going to put this piece on in such a way that it overlaps the line, covers the whole area. And then I need my pins. And I'm just gonna pin them in place for now. Now I'm gonna take my second piece of fabric I'm going to save this bit for when I do a piece perhaps a, just one of the straight shapes that has like just a straight bottom so that obviously I, I can make the use of that pretty gold edging so I will cut this from up here instead maybe I'll go that way yeah I don't want to cut a piece that covers the, the other half so I'm just going to cut straight up there. It's all a bit slapdash, no measuring or anything. <laughs> and now I'm going to pin this on here in such a way that when I when I run my seam along this line and open it back out it will cover the other half of my base. I hope it's making sense. It probably makes more sense to watch than it does to try and explain it verbally. So let's just put some pins along here. I have ordered from Amazon um, a little wooden seam roller to help me. Um, I think it's actually made for hanging wallpaper and stuff, but um, I noticed that amongst the reviews, there are quite a few people who do a lot of patchwork and quilting who use it for um, just pressing their seams flat. So I, I really want my slow sewing kit to just... I don't want to have to get an iron out, I don't want to have to get a machine out, I just want it all to be quiet and done by hand and I want everything I need to fit in that bag. So I've pinned those together, I will now stitch along that line that I've marked halfway up my, uh, along the length of my base shape and then when I turn it back over it will be doing that roughly and then the idea is that my applique will go somewhere like that. Once I've put my two pieces on, I'll, I'll just baste around the pendant shape and then I can trim all the excess off, but we'll see that as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over now so that I can just stitch along this line. It doesn't matter what thread I use, so I'm going to use up this little piece here. I'm just going to run a little small, neat running stitch along the length of that line. It doesn't need to be any more than that. I will go into a back stitch where it's a bit more bulky 
like here where I've got the, the hemmed edge. But other than that, I'll just use a little running stitch. It's not going to take any um, wear and tear or, or stress particularly. There we go. Just starting off with a little little double stitch to secure the thread and get me over that little bulky bit and now I'm just going into a running stitch. I'll just bring this down a little bit. Yeah, it's better. So I don't knock myself out in the ring light. <laughs> there we go. Just finish that off with a little knot. Now I can take my, no I will leave my pins in there because I'm going to tack around the outside edge now. So um, just checking that my, my, uh, my whole shape is covered properly and now I can just trim any excess from here, making sure I don't trim off the, the base. I can just trim the excess of those silk patterned fabrics. And that will all go into my Orts jar. I've got plans for these. I should be making tassels next week. Right. So now I'm going to put pins along here as well to keep this in place because the silk's got a bit of a mind of its own. And then I'm going to run another little running little neat running stitch really just needs to be basting stitch all the way around the shape like that the whole way the whole way around this isn't going to be turned inside or out or anything I should be putting a second backing piece onto this once I've finished with my embroidery so this actually won't be seen at all probably a bit of a waste using this pretty colour isn't it <laughs> I, I, I will dig out I think I might um, dig out some fairly threadbare old pillowcases that I've got and start using them for this bit because this is, yeah, I don't want to waste the pretty stuff. Okay, let's pop some pins in here. What I love about doing this kind of thing is that, you know, if, if like me, you love doing a bit of hand stitching but you're not an embroiderer. <laughs> I'm sure embroiderers would, would have to run away screaming if they could see some of the stuff I do. They could see the back of my work sometimes. <laughs> but I do love the act of just slow stitching and I will probably just run a running stitch down there as well like a kind of a running top stitch <laughs> um, I'm going to stop recording this now and come back to you when I've stitched around there and down there okay I have just finished stitching around the outer edge of my shape didn't bother stitching across the top in the end um, and I've also done a little neat running stitch down the centre to keep that down. You can see it really isn't exceptionally neat but for the style of what I'm going for it's really not important. Not to me anyway. <laughs> okay so now I'm just going to cut around the outside edge of the shape. tiny bits are going in my orts jar and the bigger bits I'll keep in for later on. So that's what I've got so far. Now I need to decide do I want to have this strip going down the centre or not. It's more striking with isn't it? So there you go, it's a waste of time doing that top stitch in there. Good job I didn't spend too much time on it isn't it? <laughs> yeah I think I like the idea of the strip of this and I'm just going to leave it torn because I think that's, that's quite pretty. I'll leave a little little bit uh, over here so that I'll get enclosed in the um, seam when I add the backing on and um, the same up here so it needs to be about there. I love all the thready frayed edges Oh, and that going in the orts jar. <laughs> so 
so I'm going to just stick two or three pins in and then tack that on. I have a friend who does the most amazing embroideries and she's very neat and very precise, also very creative. Um, it's just the most incredible quilts and things. And weaving, she also does weaving. Um, <laughs> she would have kittens if she could see some of my stitching. But you know, we've all got our own style. Mine is definitely a bit messy and eclectic and that's why I think the boho style suits me. <laughs> right. I'll just leave these ends overhanging for the time being. Now, um, I know roughly where this is going to go. Probably, about, probably more towards the bottom. Um, but I'm not going to stitch it on yet because I want to embellish it a little bit and it's going to be easier to do that with the small piece. So my idea is that I will use one, another one of these little um, shell beads, which is what I used here, attached to the centre. And then I'm going to run a line or two of contrasting stitches or perhaps some cap because this is um, like a cord that's been couched on. I don't know if the camera's going to let you see that very well. I think you can see. Yeah, there we go. Um, so I might do that as well. Um, but I thought I'd, I would run some of these different threads that I've that I've found to tie this in with the background fabrics and then I'm going to do the same as I did last week I'm going to stitch in like I was saying just now stitch into some of the pattern that's printed on the fabric and um, I'll probably just do some more running stitches in the different colours up and down this yellow um, and possibly um, some French knots into some of these little squares because you can see the little squares got dots in maybe the ones that got dots in I could put French knots and then finish up with some of those cube shaped brass beads along the edge which is going to be a bit of a labour of love <laughs> but I think it looked really pretty and all I did to attach these before was just brought the thread up from the back oh, that knot's not big enough Let's just do a little tiny stitch to anchor it <laughs> That was very exciting because I think this is my um, <laughs> steamroller. This is my steamroller. Yeah. Nice, so you can put pressure on and really. It's a bit squeaky. <laughs> I might have to uh, put a bit of WD 40 on that. But it's nice, it feels nice in your hand as well. and. Um, it will look nice in my little bag. And I did say at the beginning I wanted everything that's in my little bag to to bring me joy when I look at it. <laughs> brought, my, brought my thread up from the back, secured it with a little tiny stitch, and now I've threaded on my um, my little shell bead. And then I'm just going to go working my way around it. Just keep coming back up through that hole. A little bit slapdash, don't care. <laughs> it's more difficult to get the needle to go through the hole because it's getting full up with thread now and then what I did last time was just make myself a kind of little French knot and then back down through again oh, that's it so I've got a little little French knot in the middle can't get it to focus there we go right so that's that now I might as well, since I've got this thread on here, I might as well do my first line of oops stitching. Did have it on there. 
and I might repeat this um, this motif for one of the other pieces as well just to help pull everything together because um, I like the idea of cutting a circle and then just couching it a piece of cord onto it in the spiral shape. I love spirals. And then adding stitching. Actually quite fast for slow stitching really. <laughs> it's slow but there's a lot of repetition. And you can just keep working into it and working into it to your heart's content really. What we always say with uh, when you're doing uh, paintings or, or whatever as well, if, if, if you're not happy with it, if it doesn't look right yet, then you haven't finished. <laughs> Although it's a fine line, you do also need to know when to stop. That's going to end that there. I'm just going to secure it with a little knot. Just uh, go back under that stitch to just tie a little knot, clip it off, put it in a warts jar. <laughs> it's already looking more interesting and fitting in with the with the piece a bit more. I was talking about maybe cutting the size of the circle down but Actually, I'm not going to. I think it looks quite striking like that. I'm going to leave it. If it was smaller, it might look a bit sort of insignificant. Yeah. And then even when I stitch it on, I might further elaborate. So I might do big, um, I might do a blanket stitch or, or big, uh, sort of deliberately oversized um, kind of couching to um, just further embellish the shape. So I might just try one of these other colours. Yeah, maybe I'll do. I'll, I'll just use this all six strands together, just for a bit of contrast in uh, in texture. Okay. Um, I might now. Yeah, I'm going to do a bit of green chain stitch and I'm going to do a bit of extra couching over the thread that's there. I'm going to use two, uh, four strands of this pink for that. So I'm just going to put a little couching stitch in between each of the couching stitches that's already there. great because it just means I just haven't got to think about anything. I'm just following what's already there. Maybe my little stitch has ended up going in a different direction from the one that's already there but I'm not going to worry about that. done some real leery colour schemes in the house in, in the past. <laughs> I remember the boys coming home after one weekend away with their dad to find I'd painted the hallway in purple and green stripes. <laughs> well kind of to be fair lilac and, and a nice kind of um, soft minty green. <laughs> oh yeah, it didn't last long. It was during the 80s when we were all doing paint effects and stuff. And, you know, paint was cheap. So let's overlap this with where that sort of minty, minty green starts to run out. Oh, pull down right through. base fabric of this applique piece is quite a coarse woven so the knots pulling right through. There we go. So 
I've just done a little stitch to anchor it and now I'm going to do a little line of chain stitch until this thread runs out. getting there yeah it's just occurred to me what would be quite nice instead of just a straightforward you know straight stitch coming out from here some of them could be uh, pistol stitches like that was something Anne Brook showed us where you've got like a a French knot with a a long line with a French knot at the end of it that would be quite fun to do it'd take quite a while but it would be quite fun to do or shall I save that idea for when I'm using a smaller circular piece later on because I've got another this is another piece that came in one of the scrap bags so yeah if I had a small piece like that yes I might save it for yes okay took myself out of that <laughs> I feel like I need a bit more pink around here now as well so the other thing I thought I might just because most of this now is a question of you know put it all together stitch away to your heart's content <laughs> until I'm happy with how it looks and then I just need to put the back in on the same as I did last time and after I put the back in on is when I'll add the beads I think but I thought it might be worth just quickly showing how I did the stitching into the a pattern in the fabric I use the stranded cotton instead and I've got two strands tiny knot And uh, what I'm going to do is one of those little kind of lazy daisy type stitches into each one of these. The little, like it's like a separate chain stitch. So I'm going to go, it's going to be hard to show you this on, on this camera. There, I'm coming up there. And then I'm going back in just almost in the same place. And coming out again at, at the end. It's really hard to do this at arm's length under the camera. <laughs> so it's, oh dear, so it's not the neatest. Let's see if I can do a better one. That's better. That's more like it. Do another one. I'm trying to look down through the top of my ring light. It's not the best. <laughs> I quite like deliberately making the sort of anchoring stitch a bit longer like that here and there because it just looks more like natural petals or something. Just quite like the look of it. One of the things I love that Anne Brooke did is just showing very basic stitches and then how to kind of play around with them. You know make them some bits longer and some bits shorter and just to yeah just to, to mess mess around with with the how you form the stitches just to put a different spin on them there we go so that's the kind of thing that's the kind of thing I was doing and then like say on this piece I might just run a tiny back stitch all the way around that I might just use some gold, I don't like using metallic thread, but I might just use a little bit of gold thread to just pick up some of these as well, just to make it, give it a bit of sparkle. 
so I will be spending quite a while this evening doing some more of that because it's very therapeutic and it's the sort of thing I don't need to concentrate on too hard and it's, although the, you know you saw how rough my stitching was but the overall effect um, let's see if I can get this to blink in well focus Yeah, see, you can see how rough my stitches are. But you know, the overall effect, once you've done quite a lot of it, and in amongst everything else, you know, it's still, I'm, I'm happy with it. So I'll take that needle out of there now. I can re-thread that when I'm ready to finish that. Um, I will run, I think, a whole series of running stitches of all the different colours I'm using up and down this yellow piece of sari ribbon but I'll leave the edge the edges um, afraid I will put this on when I've I might put this on before I start doing any more work in the background I don't want to end up covering up uh, what I've done I'm on the verge of covering it up there um, and then I will do some fun stitches around here maybe some big chain stitches some pistol stitches I don't know whatever whatever I feel like in the moment and um, which is the way I generally work and I might do some French knots into some of these squares as well um, so if, if I see for me it it helps my head if I just make a little rule and then I'll, I stick to it so if I say right I'm only going to put a French knot wherever one of these little squares has got a dot in the middle or, or red dot in the middle actually all of them have got little dots in the middle <laughs> so I'm only going to do it where the dot in the middle is red or, or deep pink um, or something like that you know or I will only do it on the squares that are yellow so, so I make myself a little rule like that so I haven't got to think about it and then I can just chill binge watch a bit of something and um, just enjoy myself and see how it turns out and then when I'm when I'm all done I'll just be um, using a plain piece of um, some kind of cotton on the back I probably shouldn't have wasted this color because that does I might just have to find another bit of this color just to back it with I have got some more I did have some more left didn't I yeah yeah so I'll probably just use another piece of this to back it with because the color does look really pretty with those things doesn't it don't see anything else I need to mention I will just um carry on doing this and I'll come back and um show you how it turns out um I'll probably put the backing on and then I will come back and show you how I put the beads around the edge well, it's taken me a good um, couple of hours, but I'm happy with that now. Um, sort of run out of time today because it's getting a bit late, but all I need to do now is um, add a back in. So I'll put that face down, cut round it, stitch it round, turn it inside out, and then um, oh, I'll be able to use my little seam roller. <laughs> And then I'll probably just run a little running stitch. I'm going to go back and do this one as well, actually. Just run a little running stitch all around the edge here. And then I'm going to add my little cube-shaped beads. So, yeah. Um, all, all I did was, um, as I mentioned before, just followed through the pattern that was already printed on the fabric. Did very simple mixture of straight stitches and little chain stitches and some French knots over here and tiny little fat cross stitches and mostly running stitches around here, a bit of blanket stitch um, yeah very very easy, quite absorbing watched a film while I was doing it and um, yeah I think I'm, maybe I will start listening to audiobooks again um, one of my lovely viewers, Dolores, has um, shared a couple of her playlists on, on her YouTube channel, which look really interesting. Um, if she doesn't mind, maybe I'll include a link to them um, in the description box, because there's all sorts of really interesting stuff on there. Because um, when you're doing this, it might be easier to um, have something you just need to listen to rather than try and watch. <laughs> OK, anyway, so I'm going to do that and I will come back. Oh, I'm working now for a couple of, so I'll come back in a couple of days it's Saturday I'll probably come back on Monday and show you how I finished it all off and I think um, yeah 
my bunting is starting to take shape <laughs> anyway um thanks very much for joining me today and um, i hope you enjoyed watching that and we'll see you again really soon couple of days <laughs> bye